downtown Gulfport. Hurricane Katrina is making landfall. Shattered my windows and everything's blown away down here. It's just crazy. Hurricane Katrina, a name that will live in infamy. One of the worst natural disasters in American history. The monster hurricane originated August 23, 2005 as part of the interaction between a tropical wave, a front, and also the remnants of a tropical depression. This storm quickly intensified and turned into Tropical Storm Katrina. Lack of wind shear in place across the Bahamas and the tropics, so overall Katrina strengthened quickly into a hurricane just before making landfall in Florida. Many people don't remember that there was that landfall in Florida before turning into a monster hurricane over the Gulf of Mexico. But yes, this storm was one of the ones that affected Florida. Had a very good classic shape to it as well as it moved into the Gulf. And uh, only weakened back to a tropical storm for a short amount of time before strengthening once again. So much of the emphasis of Hurricane Katrina was on what it did to Louisiana and New Orleans and all that destruction. But we can't forget about Florida either. Those in the Sunshine State certainly remember it. 8 to 16 inches of rain fell across the greater Miami metropolitan area. But between all the wind damage and the heavy, heavy rain that caused flooding, there was about an estimated $523 million of damage across South Florida before Hurricane Katrina reformed in the Gulf of Mexico and made its bullseye towards New Orleans. The two most important ingredients to create a strong tropical cyclone? Well, lack of wind shear or change of wind direction or speed as you increase altitude within the atmosphere and warm water temperatures in the ocean. And Katrina certainly had both of these ingredients as it tracked across the Gulf of Mexico in the Loop Current, which is an area of warmer water north of Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula moving north towards the Gulf of Mexico around Louisiana, Alabama, Mississippi. Katrina became so strong in the Gulf of Mexico that it upwelled drastically cooler water temperatures from well below the sea surface. You can see that there in the blue color as it tracked northward. Katrina quickly became a Category 3 storm on the Saffir-Simpson scale with winds greater than 115 miles per hour. Strong convective thunderstorms formed on an outer eyewall and began to protrude inward, affecting the main eyewall structure. And this kind of choked off some energy. This is known as an eyewall replacement cycle. So Katrina wasn't able to really strengthen for a period of several hours due to this cycle. This helped cause the storm to nearly double in size, ensuring that the core of the storm was unobstructed and could really thrive off of that warm ocean water in the loop current. Thrive it did, surging from a Category 3 to a Category 5 storm in just a matter of 9 hours. Wind sustained at over 125 miles per hour, a barometric pressure of only 902 millibars the strongest hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico at that time. Luckily, Major Hurricane Katrina was at its peak in the wide open waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Another eyewall replacement cycle caused it to drastically weaken from a Category 5 to a Category 3 storm before making landfall. It could have been a lot worse. August 29, 2005 in Burris Triumph, Louisiana, right along the Mississippi border, Katrina made landfall. The massive wind field of Katrina allowed so much water to be pushed forward and the location that it made landfall due to the shape of the coastline allowed a massive storm surge to flow into the parishes of southern Louisiana causing significant destructive flooding 
and the winds of course didn't help either. Let's analyze the storm a little bit on the 3D Max Doppler radar network. Here is Hurricane Katrina before landfall with those very heavy outer rain bands pummeling New Orleans and surrounding areas. Let's zoom in on something you don't often think of with hurricanes, and that's an individual tornado threat. Extreme damaging winds of over 100 miles an hour being launched into the Gulf Coast, but notice that little velocity couplet with the red and greens next to each other. That is a tight area of rotation indicative of a possible tornado. You can see that on multiple products with those reds and greens together. The normalized rotation, that darker blue color, and then the green color indicating the strong probability of a possible tornado. And then looking in the three-dimensional mode. Here you go, some dark red reflectivities, very strong. And looking at the three-dimensional rotation, you could definitely see that rotation coming in from the sky at a tilted angle and hitting down towards the ground. The most significant wind was right before Katrina made landfall. Radar and or ground weather stations recorded wind speeds at 70, 80, 90, even near 100 miles per hour on shore. New Orleans picked up a one minute sustained wind at 97 miles per hour. Gusts were even higher. Downtown Gulfport. Katrina Due to its massive size and strength, Katrina did not weaken that much right after landfall, allowing for a significant spiral rain bands to continue to rotate on shore with also very damaging winds. Plus, the main culprit of the storm, the storm surge. Let's take a radar look inside of the storm and see what it looked like in three-dimensional mode as it continued to make landfall. You could definitely see a very spiral look to the storm with moderate rain or even heavy rain convective clusters similar to those towers that we looked at earlier when it was over the Gulf of Mexico. Very high up in the atmosphere, several miles up, so the significant energy with the storm and loads of moisture allowed for several inches if not feet of rain to fall, plus in areas like New Orleans where the levee system broke allowing Lake Pontchartrain to the north to flood in. There just was feet upon feet of water. Hurricane Katrina is now retired after causing over 108 billion dollars in damages. The costliest U.S. natural disaster in history. Over 1,500 people also lost their lives in the storm. Eleven years later people are still putting things back together. From a meteorological perspective, Katrina was a fascinating storm. It might be retired now, but it will be studied for years to come. Reporting for Neoweather, I'm Brian Ivey.